Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the long-awaited return of the Sunday Closer Looks. And it's probably not Sunday by the time you're watching this. Well, I'm working on it. I'm working on getting things back on schedule. Anyway, this one was taking a little bit longer than anticipated, so I do apologize for the delay. Um, but I think the content will more than make up for it, because this is this is a good and Yeah, this is a little something that I picked up a couple months ago, and... Uh, intentionally left uh, left out of the uh, update videos because I wanted to save it uh, for a closer look and just like dive right into a closer look so uh, that's what we're gonna do today what am I talking about well it took me a long time to finally pick this bad boy up it actually came out about three years ago this is actually the re-release version which came out two years ago we have the Bond 50. Yes, the 50th anniversary ultimate collection of the first 23 James Bond films. Yes, this has everything from Dr. No all the way up to Skyfall. So, pretty awesome. Now, we're going to take a look at this over the course of two Closer Look videos because there's just so much stuff in here. Now, originally, the plan was to just do, basically, the video would be just to look at the packaging and talk a little bit about it. Um, and then I was just going to put the list of extras in the description, because it's a lot to go into. So I tried that, but the, dis the, the list of extras is so vast that it's too long. It actually exceeds the maximum allowable length for a YouTube video description, so... <laughs> So much for that plan. I guess we'll go through it in the video. So I actually have all of them listed here. This was the majority of my day today. I went through e every single disc. There's 24 discs in that set. I popped each one individually into the Blu-ray player, waited for the menu to come up, checked all the extras, and made a comprehensive list of them. This is 18 pages long. Okay? Just to give you some idea. 18 pages of extras. This set is loaded, man. It is so loaded. Anyway, let's not waste any time. Let's get into part one. We're going to cover the first half of the set, which covers 1962 to 1981. So that would be Dr. No up to For Your Eyes Only. Alrighty, and then next week we'll take a look at the rest of them. Alrighty, let's not waste any time. The Bond 50, part one, on a closer look. Today on the Multimedia Chronicles. Closer look at the Bond 50 today on the Multimedia Chronicles. Yeah, okay, that's just, I'm not going to do that anymore. Um, yeah, I, I'm just going to take this backing off because it's really freaking annoying holding it there just for the sake of completeness. Basically just gives you a, a little look. Well, I'll give you a closer look at this when we do the closer look here on a closer look. Alrighty, so this is the set. Let's go down to the black box and look at it up close and personal like. Okay, here we go. Boom. The Bond 50. Now, of course, this... Originally had some snot glue on. Actually, I don't know if this did have snot glue on it. This may have been snot glueless and just held together by cellophane. Because, I mean, there's no marks or anything to indicate that there was glue or a hair on it. Anyway, uh, yeah, but anyway, that's basically what it looked like on the, on the shelf. Celebrating five decades of Bond 007. We, uh, whoa, whoa, <laughs> let's try not to dump it on the floor. If we turn it over, I'm just gonna, yeah, there we go. And then you can see just kind of, yeah, a general breakdown of, of what the set looks like inside. So you got all the, the discs there, and uh, the whole thing is presented in uh, two sort of hardcover book style cases. And we'll take a look at that. And then here there are, uh, you know, 23 films on Blu ray from Dr. No to Skyfall. Over 120 hours of extras, including in-depth behind-the-scenes interviews, cast and crew commentaries, and more for each film. 
bonus disc with exclusive content. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. So as I mentioned uh, before, this is actually the second release of the Bond 50. Uh, the original release was in 2012, which was the actual um, 50th anniversary. And then this one was from the, the following year. Basically just, I mean, it's exactly the same. I think it's maybe in a slightly smaller box, but that's about it. Um, but really the only difference is it includes Skyfall. Previously, Skyfall was not included. There was just a, there was an empty sleeve in there to put your Skyfall disc in if you wanted, but uh, you know, otherwise it was not included because it hadn't come out yet. But uh, there you go. And then nothing on the inside, just plain cardboard. All right, we're gonna set that aside forever. So here you go, you got a nice little 50th anniversary logo, and then it's upside down, and there we go. <laughs> All right, so if we just take a look here, you can see it's two hardcover book style things and they just slide out nice and easy like that. Nice hard cardboard uh, case, very sturdy, very sturdy, looks great on the shelf. Now this is the second set. We'll look at this next time. We're going to save that. We want to look at this one. This is the first set. So if we flip around to the top, you can see very nice. Uh, Bond 50, 1962 to 1981. Woo! Sorry, I was just adjusting the focus ever so slightly. But uh, yeah, so we open it up. Oh, look at that. Beautiful photos from the films that are on this page. And here we have the first two movies. 1962's Dr. No and 1963's From Russia with Love. Very nice. Now, very similar if you watched my uh, my overview of the Matt Smith collection, Doctor Who set. Very similar. We've got the, uh, the discs in these sleeves. You just kind of bend it down a little bit to get it over the lip, and then it comes out fairly easily. Um, not really a big concern about scratching the discs with the Blu-rays versus if this was DVD because um, Blu-rays are very very hard to scratch, actually, unless you're intentionally trying really hard to scratch them. So, yeah, so very, very nice indeed. And if we flip over to the next page, we have the next two movies. We'll just look here. Of course, have the ever-popular Goldfinger, which is um, one of my favorites, actually. I love Goldfinger. And also notable in the franchise, because it was the first one that sort of introduced a lot of the... Uh, you know, it would later become the standard Bond tropes, you know, with the, a lot more emphasis on the gadgets and the sort of tongue-in-cheek quips and, uh, you know, uh, de definitely more of the, the sort of humor that would become uh, the staple of the series going forward. Uh, the first two were, were played a little bit more straight. There's still elements of the classic Bond stuff in there, but the first two were played a little bit more straight as straight-up espionage movies. So here, of course, we have Goldfinger from 1964 and Thunderball from 1965. Great stuff. And then here, here we have uh, the first one that I haven't seen, actually, on Her Majesty's Secret Service. I've never seen that one. Um, well, now I own it, so I will have to get around to seeing that. Of course, little Donald Pleasance as uh, Blofeld there. So we got... Uh, you Only Live Twice from 1967 and On Her Majesty's Secret Service from 1969. For some reason, John, uh, Sean Connery just didn't want to return for that one. But they talked him into coming back one more time to do Diamonds Are Forever in 1971. And then, of course, in 1973, we were introduced to Roger Moore in the absolutely fantastic live and let die that's one of my favorites from the uh, 70s era actually i love that movie great stuff uh now roger moore's bond introduced a little bit more of the fun aspect there's a lot more humor in his uh incarnation and roger moore was the one that i mainly grew up with as well i'd i'd seen all of those when i was a kid um so we had the man with the golden gun from 1974 the Spy Who Loved Me from 1977. I have to say, one of the things I love about this set versus previous versions, uh, like releases of Bond, is that these are released, uh, the, this whole set is organized chronologically in original uh, release date order. Because, I mean, that that's, I don't know anybody who doesn't like to organize their Bond movies like that. I mean, the, the previous Ultimate Editions that came out in, uh, it was like four box sets, um, 
were very haphazard. I mean, there was no rhyme or reason to wh why certain sets included certain movies, and there was no continuity to them, no sort of pattern. It just seemed really random. So what I know some people did was they would take the slim cases out of the box and organize them chronologically on their shelf. And uh, there you go. So here we got more lovely photos. Really like the uh, the artwork in this. Very nice little montages. Uh, and then we have Moonraker from 1979. This was actually the very first James Bond movie I ever saw. Yes. Um, being a big sci-fi nut, of course, it was a lovely introduction for me because this is the sci-fi one. It's all outer spacey stuff. So, of course, I guess, uh, you know, Star Wars is really popular. And uh, same year, we had a lot of other sci-fi stuff, like Alien came out that year. Uh, the Black Hole came out that year, which is a great, uh, you know, un unusually dark Disney sci-fi movie. Uh, yeah, so it was just the year of sci-fi. So anyway, uh, Moonraker, good stuff. Uh, and then we got For Your Eyes Only, uh, 1981. Lots of fun there. And that actually takes us to the end of this set. So uh, just one last thing. We turn the page here. There's a, there's a hair in there. Get, get out of there. I don't want hair in my Bond set. All right. Just turn the page. Uh, oh no! Hold on a second. Turn the page here. There we go. And we basically just have the uh, the primary credits for each of the movies. Okay. Now, now, the reason this uh, overview took so bloody long to do is because I was doing my comprehensive list of extras. So let's go through it, shall we? I'll try not to take too long here. All right. So first, Doctor No from 1962. We have. Commentary by director Terence Young and members of the cast and crew. Top level access, license to restore, which is a really cool featurette, uh, uh, all about the restoration of the uh, the early films and uh, stuff like that. Really cool to see that uh, that process and how they archive everything. Uh, declassified the MI6 vault. Now this is a feature that's on the vast majority of the discs. Basically, it's it's primarily uh, you, you'll see a lot of archival stuff in there, uh, as well as some new stuff. It's kind of just a random mix. But anyway, featurettes generally focusing on the franchise as a whole and how uh, you know each movie kind of fits into the franchise. So in this case, we've got two featurettes: uh, the Guns of James Bond and Premier Bond opening nights. And then we got 007 Mission Control. Uh, 007 Mission Control is basically a glorified scene select. Now, interesting thing to note about that. Uh, the 007 Mission Control is a feature that was introduced uh, back when they first tried to put all the Bonds out on Blu-ray. They only got about halfway. Um, I had all the ones that they had done at the time. They did, I believe, 11 of the, uh, of the original, what, 21, something like that. Prior to the prior to the Casino Royale reboot, obviously. So anyway, uh, so they did. Uh, so so they had this Double Seven Mission Control feature, and they did. Uh, so they did the first like eleven movies uh, of the classic Bonds, and then they stopped because MGM was borderline in financial ruins at the time. So they uh, needed some time to sort of get their shit together and uh, and figure out what they were going to do. Uh, needless to say, they got it all figured out, and things are all wonderful and happy and delicious again. Um, but the reason I mention it is because the one way you can tell, uh, if any of you were wondering if any of the discs in this are just re-releases of those original Blu-ray releases, I can tell you definitively that yes, they are. All of the ones that were previously released, it's the exact same discs in here. And then all the other ones are obviously new because they were never on Blu-ray before. Um... So yeah, so there's a couple ways you can tell. First off, the old releases all have that 007 Mission Control feature. The other way you can tell is by how fast it takes you to get to the main menu. The old releases, you can just skip. You can just skip ahead through the, the warnings and the everything and just get to the menu in a matter of seconds. The new releases, like the ones that hadn't been released before that are new as of this set and the, the new editions that have come out, um, the new ones, you have to sit through the Fox Home Entertainment logo and the FBI warning. You cannot skip them. And it's really annoying. <laughs> so that's the dead giveaway. If you're wondering which disc is which, you can tell by how long it takes you to get to the menu. The older ones are faster, the new ones are slower, and whether or not it has that 007 mission control feature. Anyway, there you go. Now you know. 
Uh, and then carrying on with the special features for Dr. No, we have the Mission Dossier, which is a various behind-the-scenes featurettes. This is another uh, thing that you'll see on quite a few of them. Uh, so we've got Inside Dr. No, Terrence Young, Bon Vivant, and Dr. No 1963 featurette. And then we have the Ministry of Propaganda, which is basically trailers and uh, promotional spots from uh, theater, TV, and radio. And Image Database, which of course is a photo gallery behind the scenes and promotional photos. So there you go. So that wraps it up for Dr. No. Really good stuff there. I should mention uh, just one last thing about the 007 Mission Control feature. I say it's a glorified scene select. What it is specifically is it takes you to notable or key scenes in the movie, like ones that first introduce characters or you know the first time he says bond james bond in that particular movie uh you know the first time you see certain gadgets uh introductions of villains things like that so any like significant moment in the movie that's what the mission control feature takes you to but as i say it's basically just a scene select i mean it's it's really kind of a useless feature and i can definitely see why they discontinued it for the remainder of the releases um okay from Russia with Love. God, this is going to take. This is going to be a long video. <laughs> I see why we're doing this in two parts. Uh, from Russia with Love, we got Tom commentary by director Terrence Young and members of the cast and crew. Uh, declassified, the MI6 vault has quite a lot of stuff this time around. We got Ian Fleming, the CBC interview. Ian Fleming and Raymond Chandler. Ian Fleming on Desert Island Discs, and an animated storyboard sequence. And we got the 007 Mission Control feature again. Uh, under Mission Dossier, we've got Inside from Russia with Love and Harry Saltzman, Showman, and then the usual Ministry of Propaganda and Image Database features as well. Now, carrying on, you know what, I'm going to show you the, the artwork pages because they're prettier. So, carrying on, so okay, so here we've got uh, Disc 3 Goldfinger from 1964. Got commentary by director Guy Hamilton and commentary by members of the cast and crew. I didn't go and listen to all the commentaries and stuff uh, to f see specifically who was in them. So, sorry, you'll just have to listen to your for yourself to figure that out. Um, but basically, I went through all 24 discs today and made these lists of extras because uh, none of the lists I found online were properly comprehensive. Um, so then we got Declassified, MI6 Vault. We've got Sean Connery from the set of Goldfinger. So some actual archival footage on the, on the set. It's pretty cool. Uh, Theodore Bikel screen test. Tito Vandis screen test. That's uh, some pretty cool rare behind-the-scenes stuff there. On tour with the Aston Martin DB5. And Honor Blackman open-ended interview. Basically, that's a cool little interview where, uh, you know, Honor Blackman gives the answers two questions and then they would send this out to uh uh you know tv stations so that the local uh interviewers could kind of edit themselves into it to make it seem like they were interviewing her so kind of sneaky uh we got 007 mission control again we got mission dossier we have the making of goldfinger the goldfinger phenomenon and an original publicity feature so there's a lot of archival stuff on the goldfinger disc that's pretty cool and then we got Ministry of Propaganda and Image Database yet again. So disc four, Thunderball from 1965. We have commentary by director Terrence Young. Commentary, another commentary by editor Peter Hunt and screenwriter John Hopkins and others. No indication as to who the others are. Uh, Declassified MI6 Vault has The Incredible World of James Bond, an original 1965 NBC television special. A Child's Guide to Blowing Up a Motor Car which is a 1965 Ford promotional film. Okay, cool. Didn't know Ford wanted to promote the blowing up of their vehicles and two children, but there you go. Uh, on location with Ken Adam, Bill Souter, the rocket man of movies. Yes, Thunderball features an actual working rocket pack. A lot of people don't believe that it was real, but it actually was real. This guy had invented one and would uh, and would fly it around in movies and stuff. Uh, you know, would would like hire himself and the, and the jetpack out and uh, fly around in movies and stuff. Uh, you also see the same jetpack and the same guy doing the whole rocket pack thing um, in Arc Two, the Filmation Saturday Morning series. Yeah, they did a bunch of uh, stuff with that, so it was pretty cool. I, it was only, I mean, it's not like you could fly around the world in it. It was just, you know, for short short bursts, essentially. Just, uh, you know, do a quick sweep and then land and refuel. And do another quick sweep and land and refuel. It's like, <laughs> so it's not a fuel-efficient rocket pack like you see in the movie serials. No, no. But but it worked. It was, it was a genuine rocket pack. Uh, then you got a Thunderball boat show reel. 
And Selling Bonds, original 1965 television commercials. So that's pretty cool. And then you got 007 Mission Control again. You got the Mission Dossier. You have The Making of Thunderball, The Thunderball Phenomenon, and The Secret History of Thunderball. And then Ministry of Propaganda again, and Image Database. Then we have uh, You Only Live Twice from 1967. Got a commentary track featuring director Lewis Gilbert and members of the cast and crew. Declassified MI6 Vault features Welcome to Japan, Mr. Bond. Uh, Wicker's World highlights from a 1967 BBC documentary about the movie. Uh, and On Location with Ken Adam. Now, we do not have the 007 uh, Mission Control feature right on here because this particular one was not released in the original batch. So it's the first of the previously unreleased uh, movies. Uh, so prior to 2012, you couldn't get this one on Blu-ray. Uh, so Mission Dossier, behind-the-scenes featurettes. You've got Inside, You Only Live Twice, Silhouettes, the James Bond titles, Plane Crash, Animated Storyboard Sequence, and Exotic Locations. And you got, of course, the Ministry of Propaganda and Image Database. Then Disc 6 on Her Majesty's Secret Service from 1969. We've got commentary featuring director Peter Hunt and members of the cast and crew. Declassified, the MI6 vault features casting on Her Majesty's, on Her Majesty's Secret Service. Press Day in Portugal. George Laz Lazenby, in his own words, Lazenby, Lazenby, uh, Shot on Ice, an original 1969 Ford promo film. And Swiss Movement, original 1969 featurette. Once again, no 007 Mission Control because this one was not released in the old uh, releases. Uh, available for the first time in this set. Uh, we have Mission Dossier, behind the scenes featurettes. We've got Inside on Her Majesty's Secret Service, Inside Q's Lab, Above It All, an original 1969 featurette, and Exotic Locations. And we, of course, have the Ministry of Propaganda and Image Database once again. Carrying on... Okay, have I missed one? Oh no, I was I was looking at the wrong page. Sorry. Disc seven. We have Diamonds Are Forever from 1971. Commentary featuring Guy Hamilton and members of the cast and crew. Declassified MI6 vault featurettes. Uh, we have Sean Connery 1971, the BBC interview. Lesson number 007, close quarter combat. Oil rig attack, satellite test reel, explosion tests, alternate and expanded angles, deleted scene, and deleted scenes. That's pretty cool. First batch of deleted scenes we've seen. Scenes is scenes is scene. Uh, then no 007 mission control because this one was not released previously. We've got uh, mission dossier. We have inside diamonds are forever. Cubby, Cubby Broccoli, the man behind Bond and exotic locations. And then the usual mission of ministry of or sort of the usual ministry of propaganda and image database features as well. Then disc eight, we meet Roger Moore with Live and Let Die from 1973. The commentary by director Guy Hamilton, commentary by screenwriter Tom Mankiewicz, and commentary by Sir Roger Moore. Yeah, Roger Moore actually does commentaries for all of his Bond movies, every single one of them. So that's pretty cool. Uh, very very cool of him to uh, to do that to participate in that. Uh, declassified. The MI6 vault has Bond 1973, the Lost documentary. Ooh, I gotta love, gotta love Lost stuff that's been rediscovered. Uh, Roger Moore as James Bond, circa 1964. Yes, he was actually being considered for the role prior to uh, actually landing it in 1973. So interesting little feature out about that. Uh, and then we got Live and Let Die conceptual art. This one, we uh, see the return of 007 Mission Control, the glorified scene selection of Doom, uh, because this one was previously released. And then we have Mission Dossier, Inside Live and Let Die, On Set with Roger Moore, The Funeral Parade, and On Set with Roger Moore, Hang Gliding Lessons. So that's pretty cool. Some very direct behind-the-scenes footage. A lot of archival stuff on this one. Very cool. And then the usual Ministry of Propaganda and Image Database. Next, we have The Man with the Golden Gun from 1974. We have commentary by director Guy Hamilton and members of the cast and crew. Commentary by Sir Roger Moore. Uh, Declassified MI6 Vault features The Russell Hardy Show. On location with The Man with the Golden Gun. Girls Fighting. American Thrill Show Stunt Film. 
and Guy Hamilton, the director, speaks. And then we have 007 Mission Control again, because this one was available uh, previously. And then we got uh, in the Mission Dossier, we have Inside the Man with the Golden Gun, an original documentary, 00 Stuntmen, and then uh, Ministry of Propaganda and Image Database Features. Then Disc 10, we have The Spy Who Loved Me from 1977. And we have Commentary featuring director Lewis Gilbert, production designer Ken Adam, co-writer Christopher Wood, and Michael G. Wilson. And then, of course, the commentary by Sir Roger Moore. And then the declassified MI6 vault has 007 in Egypt, Roger Moore, My Word is My Bond, On Location with Ken Adam, 007 Stage Dedication, original 1977 featurette, uh, and Escape from Atlantis storyboard sequence. And then we do not have the 007 Mission Control because this one was not previously available. Uh, so we have the Mission Dossier, which includes Inside the Spy Who Loved Me, Ken Adam Designing Bond, and Exotic Locations. And then the usual Ministry of Propaganda and Image Database. And finally, we have Disc 11 Moonraker from 1979. Commentary by director Lewis Gilbert and members of the cast and crew. Commentary by Sir Roger Moore. By the way, I said finally because we're finally on the last page. Not that this is the last movie. There's two movies here. Uh, Declassified MI6 Vault has quite a pile of stuff this time. We've got 007 in Rio, an original 1979 production featurette. Bond 79, Ken Adams production films, Learning to Free Fall, skydiving test footage, skydiving storyboards, circus footage, cable car art alternative storyboard 1, and cable car alt alternative storyboard 2. So there was a couple different ideas they had for that sequence. Uh, we got 007 Mission Control again because this one was previously available. Uh, I remember I had the steelbook of it actually. Uh, Mission Dossier, behind the scenes featurettes. Uh, we have Inside Moonraker, an original documentary, and the Men Behind the Mayhem special effects documentary, and then, of course, the Ministry of Propaganda and Image Database. Last, but most certainly not least, we have 1981's For Your Eyes Only on Disc 12, which features commentary by Michael G. Wilson and crew, commentary by Sir Roger Moore, uh, the declassified MI6 vault features deleted scenes and expanded angles, so you get some additional angles uh, for some of the the um, scenes and whatnot. That's pretty cool. Uh, Bond in Greece, Bond in Cortina, and Neptune's Journey. Got the 007 Mission Control feature again, because this one was previously released. Uh, mission Dossier, behind the scenes featurettes. Excuse me, it's getting late. Uh, include Inside for Your Eyes Only, Animated Storyboard Sequence for the Snowmobile Chase, Animated Storyboard Sequence for the Underwater Sequence, and Sheena Easton's music video for the title song. And then finally, we have the Ministry of Propaganda, trailers, promos, theatrical TV and radio, and image database photo gallery. da -da! And that is it for book one of the Bond 50. Ugh. Pretty awesome stuff i gotta say this is uh, i wasn't kidding when i said that this is a loaded set so next time we'll take a look at the second book but for now we'll head back over to the chair and uh say goodbye for this week's closer look holy guacamole that took forever and we're only halfway through <laughs> all righty well that is it for this week's Closer Look. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, what I'm hoping will be a fairly comprehensive look at the at the Bond 50 set. I mean, I don't know how much more in-depth we can get than, than listing every single freaking extra on there. I guess if I wanted to get really in-depth, I could have uh, I could have listed absolutely every everything in the 007 Mission Control and then went into, like, ridiculously anal retentive detail about specifically which trailers and promo spots are there. But, yeah, whatever. You, you don't need to know all that information. You just need to know that that feature is there and you can explore it to your heart's content at your leisure. Now, the stuff you guys want to know about is what kind of featurettes are on there, what kind of actual proper extras are on there. Yeah, and that's basically what I'm what I'm covering here is just the you know the important stuff, the stuff you want to know about. Um, yeah. So anyway, that is it for part one. So we'll see you next week for part two, and I promise it'll be up on time this time. It'll actually be on Sunday. Um, yeah. So I just like to take a quick moment to thank my Patreon sponsors. Hey, 
Patreon sponsors. Thanks. You guys are awesome. Um, yeah, special extra big thanks to my two highest level sponsors, namely Kyle Pellegrin and Get Your Gorgeous On, which is an awesome emag by the equally awesome duo of Michelle O'Toole and Simon Hedger. So, uh, big thanks, guys. Really appreciate the support. Please do consider becoming a Patreon sponsor because every bit goes right back into the show uh, in the form of equipment upgrades, cool big ass Blu ray sets like that to do umpteen videos about, and uh, whatever. Just it's comes right back around to what you're seeing so yeah no amounts too big no amounts too small everything helps and it just means i can make more stuff for you so everybody wins <laughs> all righty that is it for me to you for now so we'll see you next time for part two of a closer look at the bond 50 and um see you over the course of the rest of the week for whatever else i've got for you you'll just have to wait and see until then thanks for watching and sayonara Right. Fine. Wouldn't know it's the middle of the night, would you? Stereo. <clears throat> yes, indeed. White. Balance. Yeah, that's good. All right. <clears throat> uh, so redoing this one from scratch because uh, after evaluating just how many extras there are well I'll explain in the video it's been the majority of my day is making that fucking list of extras <clears throat> but that's okay I don't work till 3 30 so I can literally stay up till 6 in the morning filming stuff so woohoo I'm gonna be so zonked by the end of this all right here we go <clears throat> No, that's a poop. Oh, no, maybe not. Fuck, I don't even know. I'm gonna... No, that's a poop. <clears throat>